Hey guys, today I have the pleasure of painting the Knight Errant from the Tainted Grail Monsters of Avalon box. This is a really cool miniature, mainly because he's right there on the box cover, so you know he's really cool. Uh, obviously there's some differences between the stylized art and the miniature, we'll probably get into a little bit of that. Uh, like for one thing, the candles aren't really glowing, and uh, another thing is the sword isn't on fire. But anyway, we're going to get into that. And I'm going to kind of talk through why I painted him the way I did and all that kind of stuff. So looking forward to kind of talking you through uh, a few mistakes, a few kind of uh, aha moments, and just a few decision points here. Uh, real quick, before I get into the video itself, I want to let you guys know that I am in the midst of a giveaway for Oathsworn plus the mystery chest. That's the chest that the box, I should say, that gets you all the you know, awesome encounter miniature. So you, I'm giving that away for free. Thanks to Shadowborn Games to that. Uh, link in the description below to the video that you need to comment on to get entered in to win that. Best of luck, guys, and let's get to it. All right, so first things first, I'm doing Warlock Purple. If you are coming from my Broodmother, uh, painting that I did for Osorn, you'll recognize this tactic. So this horse here is like semi-undead, dying, decaying, like everything in this world. And therefore he has like his skin peeled back or worn away or either way, he's got these like open wounds. And so just like the Broodmother, I'm doing the Warlock Purple. You can guess what I'm going to do after that with the uh, red wash and whatnot. But for now we're just kind of getting all the spots that either are obviously wounds or de are deep enough to where it looks like it could be. I think a lot of times he might just be really skinny and kind of nasty, but uh, I'm going to just, you know, fill in what I feel is is right. You can kind of play it by ear here. Now for his skin, even though I primed him in black, I don't really want, I only want one thing on this miniature pure black and, and we'll get to that uh, towards the end of the video actually. But black gray is going to be the color for uh, the horse. I think it's a little bit more of a natural, you know, nothing's really you know, pure dark, maybe in this world, but uh, uh, either way, he's going to have a, a black gray. And and with all this painted, this looks fairly black. Like, it looks lighter now because it's compared to black, but when you get rid of all the black and you paint over everything, then then you should be good to go. Now, the reason I, I primed black instead of, like, white or something like that, especially because he has a white beard, and normally if you have any kind of white or yellow, you want to prime in white, uh, or even my neutral gray, a lot of times I, I, I mostly prime in gray, is just because I wanted the miniature to be a tiny bit darker than normal. And so as you're painting over these colors, because we're thinning our paints and all that, you'll still actually get a slight hint of the what's underneath it. And therefore this black will kind of show through ever so slightly and darken up pretty much all the colors. Uh, so, you know, in the end it doesn't matter a whole lot. It's not something you can even necessarily point to like, aha, this was primed black. You, know, you can you can really say that because you can always darken stuff up anyway. But uh, anyway, that that's why I did it. So so there you go. Uniform gray for the rock. You guys, if you've seen my paintings, know how I do rocks. So I'm gonna do uniform gray, then the black wash, and then the ash gray dry brush. Looks awesome. I love it. I love dry brushing. Dry brushing fur and dry brushing rock is so satisfying. Like I could do that for like maybe an hour. Maybe. It, it depends on what I was doing that day. If I wasn't doing anything, then sure. Because it's actually really satisfying. It just it, it brings out so much texture and detail in it. It's really cool. Like right now, it, it, you think it looks it looks okay, but you just wait. Okay, so now we're adding a little bit of uh, that same uniform gray uh, as a highlight for this gray, this dark gray on the horse on the skin. This is quite the highlight. I'm going to be pumping up the contrast a lot here. Um, I, you guys let me know if you like this style or not in the comments below. Uh, seriously, because I'm going to be painting more of these and I want to know what you guys think of the style that this miniature ends up being. I'm trying to actually pump the contrast a little bit because he's so dark. I don't want him just to look like a blob on the, on the, on the game board from far away. So I'm pumping up these highlights to kind of a, uh, exaggerated degree. And that really helps, I think, bring out the details and kind of the just the pose and, and everything like that. Uh, I'm bringing out my dry brush here real quick for the, the tail, uh, just because it's a lot quicker. And uh, actually, in my opinion, looks better than if I had tried to like freehand it or something like that. Now, you'll notice real quick here that I'm not holding it in my uh, Citadel Hobby Holder. I could not figure out how to get it in. I, I do later on, and I'll talk about it then, but 
So for the longest time, I was just having to hold them in because it's a weird shape, right? It's not a circle or anything like that. It was slightly too big for the small one and slightly too small for the big one of the, the little hobby holders that they sell. So it's kind of a bummer. Real quick here, Caribou Crimson in those kind of wounds, uh, it makes it look sufficiently disgusting. Tints that red or that pink, uh, just a little bit of that Warlock uh, purple, and I think it looks really nice. Rhinox Hide is a nice, deep, chestnut, dark brown, um, but not like a really, really dark brown. I mean, you can tell it's brown, it doesn't look black or anything like that. Really good for stuff like, um, uh, I've used it for wood, I've used it for hooves several times, so uh, may as well go with what I know, and that's definitely this. Uh, I, I think it looks nice, it highlights up really well. You'll, you'll see what I do with the highlight later. It's, it, I like it, I like it. It makes it, look, gives it almost kind of that shiny look that I'm hoping, that I'm hoping for here. And also you want to be careful around that base. All right, now, again, Spasha Color. Now, you've seen the thumbnail. You know how this is going to look in the end. Uh, obviously not up close, but this is kind of interesting when you take something like Emerald, right? This kind of really bright neon color, and you're putting it on this miniature that I want dark. And it's like, well, that doesn't quite make a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, several times I go through this where I'm using washes and, and stuff like that. It, just because you're using this color as a base color, it can be tinted, it can be modified, it can be changed so that the final product might or might not be this. And it could just be that because of highlighting and shadows, even if it's that color, it seems darker. It'll even depend on what's surrounding it. I mean, color is such a, a kind of uh, easily manipulated, uh, you know, thing for us, you know, and how we, how we, how we see it that, uh, Trying to figure out the right color is always always a game unto itself. But uh, this is what I chose as Emerald, and I love using Emerald. I don't use it enough. Uh, there's not enough miniatures that need Emerald. And so if there was an excuse to do it, I'm going to do it. Now I'm using Dark Tone. This is an Army Painter uh, wash. You could definitely use Nolan Oil or any kind of black wash. Really, this is just a very dark wash that works great on grays and rocks. And this is both so that's what I'm doing uh, be sure to you know liberally apply it you're gonna do a heavy dry brush later on you want that to pool nice in all those cracks and crevices all right next up we have natural steel now before I get into this um, I'm gonna be using a lot of different silvers you don't have to do that I'll be using several different browns you don't have to do that um, in my opinion the more colors you add of the same kind, so the more silver, the more browns, the more natural it looks, so that not everything is the same brown, not everything is the same silver. Just that subtle little nuance, I think, really does add a lot. I know I say that a lot, but I never know when your first video is, so sorry if you've heard me say that before, but I think it's really true, and it's something I think we probably need to remind ourselves of every now and then. Yes, it would be quicker and easier just to paint it all one silver, um, but having different ones really helps. Now, I will say, going back and editing this, and even when I was painting it, I did notice that uh, uh, a lot of these silvers get really close to the same color. By the way, I'm painting all the chains and the horse armor in this color. So uh, this is just that. So uh, his armor and anything else that's silver is going to be something different. Like, like, like his sword and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, in, in, anyway, this is a good one because it is sufficiently different. But I think I use like plate mail metal and shining silver and like the hex value is barely different. Like it's really close to the same color. So maybe didn't get what I wanted from there, but you get the idea. All right, next up, Flat Earth. We're gonna use this on a few things. First of all, the highlight on the hooves is kind of what I'm talking about. I want those streak marks, by the way. I'm purposely doing that. Uh, it just kind of adds to the, the concept of, of being kind of shiny and textured and, and round, in, in my mind anyway. I don't know if that's how light works. I, I tend to apparently not know how light works, but it looks good to me, so that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna do it on all these vines here. And there are a lot. Um, now, in general, so they're coming like out of his arm, uh, right there near his neck, and then it's also coming out of like, you know, kind of his, his torso there. Um, one thing to note is his, like, the, the leather straps around his head, um, are mixed in with this, and so it's kind of hard sometimes to tell. 
I ended up going back a few times and the more you paint, the more you can really realize what it is you're looking at. And that's actually kind of one of my, my points here. So I, I unboxed these and I looked at these, right? And kind of try to judge them, but it is kind of hard to tell before painting them with something like this where there's vines over everything. Because it, it just, it ends up looking kind of like a big, a big blob of texture. And so until you paint it different colors, and really get a sense of the differences, uh, I think that adds a lot to it. So this is actually, actually, I would highly suggest you paint these. I think it'll look a lot better. Uh, military shader on here, you can do the Thonian camo shader, whatever green wash you desire. Um, this is just to get into those shadows and uh, kind of shift it ever so slightly, but we're gonna highlight it back up. All right, dark tone again out. This is for the wash. Yes, you probably could have combined it. You probably should have. I didn't learn from my mistakes. Uh, it'll save you a little bit of time, but uh, putting this back on the horse armor, and I, I'm actually going to do this twice uh, to further darken it. So you can kind of you can wash multiple times, and if it's if it's officially dark, like dark tone, I mean it's black wash, uh, it'll just pool some more and darken it even more, which is kind of what I want. Now gunmetal out here for the kind of the 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 dude's armor itself. Again, another solid silver looks different than the natural steel so very happy about that um this is a, a, again another another one that um it just just makes it look a little bit different it's a little bit of a lighter uh silver and uh i i felt that was kind of nice too like maybe he stayed on his horse obviously for a while for those vines to grow out so he's kind of been above the, the the mud and muck maybe as much as the horse armor and uh again i just, just thought it looked cooler i want him to kind of be a focal point of the miniature. The the horse is so fantastical that I, I don't want him to be lost in it. I'm gonna do something with this cape uh, that you've probably noticed. It's really cool too. So definitely doing that as well. Now again with these lighter silvers, um, they they kind of end up blending in to look fairly close to the same. It's whatever. This texture though, and this kind of chain link that we got here, I don't know, I think it's chain mail. See, that's chain mail when I'm painting there. Which, by the way, this chain mail is far too shallow to actually take a wash and a highlight. Um, and what I mean by that is you can wash it and it'll shift it, but it won't like pool in there. There's just not enough there to pool. And so then when you, same with the, when you highlight, it's not enough to just highlight the part that's not pooled because no part pulled anyway. It's just it, it, too fine a detail. Uh, cool texture, it just doesn't, doesn't work for uh, painting purposes. Uh, like this does. Like this, this is great. This sinks in really nice. Uh, so, so these are nice. And then, uh, we're also doing the blade on here. I forgot to paint the guard until later. I will show you that though, so I didn't edit that out. And as you can see, my paints are pretty watered down. Uh, it means I had to do multiple coats. You could probably not water it down and paint it just fine with one coat and probably save some time. Okay, so natural steel out again for the guard uh, and the, the pommel here, as I said. All right, here is black. Here's the one time we're using it, and it's going to be in the eye socket. So again, if you look back on your Monsters of Avalon box, if you look at that art, uh, his eyes are pretty much black holes, and uh, I think that's really cool. It also helped the kind of flame coming out of him be a little bit better. So this is white added to that emerald, uh, and so as you can see, adding the white, uh, in my opinion, along with the wash, actually shifts it quite a bit. So be because I jumped, I jumped ship, right? Normally when you do a highlight, you do a wash, you do the base color again, then you add some white or yellow or whatever color you want to brighten it up. Um, and so it kind of gradients over. Me going from the wash directly to a, like a level two highlight essentially with this white really makes it pop. It means I don't have to build it up, so it saves me some time as well. And there's almost a bit of a color shift as well because the the light color of the emerald was actually tinted a little bit by the military shade so then when i do a white highlight of just the light green blue again it's back to that light green blue again and so between all that it just again makes it kind of pop um it i with how this was flayed um unlike his cape there this this looks kind of almost bulbous i don't know it reminded me kind of like seaweed or something like that and, um, and I know that's not what it is, but I wanted it to look almost kind of layered, and I think it does that really well. 
All right, dark tone out again, and this is for both the chainmail. And while I'm going at it, I may as well add that second coat to the horse armor as well. So I'm doing that against this to further darken it even more, especially in those kind of uh, recesses and get, get some nice shadows on there. And of course, I'm going to add it to him as well. Remember, don't expect it to actually affect his chainmail at all. Um, but it, this sword, uh, I forget the, the term of that uh, rivet inside. I believe it's to actually catch blood, uh, like like a legitimate reason for why those are on swords, not just for looks. But uh, either way, that that catches the wash pretty good. All right, now I've added white to that flat earth. And again, this is quite a big jump. I added quite a bit of white. I wanted it to kind of look bigger. And and, and here's why I'm highlighting it so so light. Um, first, really, it's not that I didn't want it to, to not pop out, because in fact, I feel like this actually pops it out a lot more, especially on the horse, which is I think where it's mostly gross. Um, but I didn't want it to look super alive. Um, uh, like, like I want it to look like it's growing, but I don't want it to look healthy. I guess healthy is the little word I'm looking for, not alive. Um, so I wanted it not this kind of deep, healthy, rich brown. Um, I wanted it, um, kind of like, you know, when you see a twig and it's all, like, sun-bleached. Um, though not, not to that level, obviously, because I do want it to seem like it's growing out of him and, and alive, but sickly and, and not exactly a, a, a nice, rich, pleasant brown. Uh, and, and so I think this this did that pretty well and I will add a, a, a wash still so so we'll we'll kind of uh, figure that out but for now just add in the highlights All right, then we have the plate mail metal, and this is a highlight. Now, like I said, this plate mail metal and the shining silver I use in the future are very close. So if you only have one, just use that one. If I were to do this again, I would just use one of them. Um, couldn't tell you which one. <laughs> it just, I guess it depends on my mood. Um, I will say uh, one's Army Painter, one's Vallejo, and uh, I... I actually don't like Vallejo metallics nearly as much. Typically, I find them too glittery. But Army Painter is such a bother to get coverage sometimes. Uh, this plate metal seems to be working good. Later on, I'll, I'll show you one that doesn't work so good. And that's kind of annoying. You can kind of see here, you can get that nice, when it's darker like that, you can get that reflective look. You can really kind of play around with it and get 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 some good contrast there, which, which I really like. I add some texture and some shine. Now, we'll say at the very end of this, I am doing a matte varnish on it all, and I do not then go back and do a gloss coat. So, I always matte varnish, uh, just because I don't want it to look painted, I want it to look natural, not shiny and reflective in the light. Though a lot of times, armor you want to, and so I actually have a brush on gloss varnish that I add after the fact, um, just on stuff like swords and armor and stuff like that, when I want it super shiny. Uh, the metallic still reflects light, um, so it's still shiny enough. I didn't want it super shiny like polished metal, so I ended up just doing the matte varnish on it. Okay, and now here's that shining silver. There isn't much of a difference. I am using it on a different thing though, and so I guess there's that. And there is a little bit of a difference. It's not the same hex value, but uh, it's it's pretty close. Uh, I've actually thought about, uh, let me know if this sounds interesting or not, doing a video on what the colors actually are. So when you look up the hex value and you find out like, oh, that's, that, that, that's a pink? I thought that was a red. Or, um, oh, apparently all these silvers are in the blue spectrum, which is cool if you want like, cool shaded um, uh, silver. A lot of times people do like this blue silver for this kind of cool colored one. Um, and there are some that are yellow, some that are blue. And so knowing the difference might actually be kind of useful. I find them kind of interesting or something like this where, hey, these two are pretty comparable. So if you already have shining silver, don't get plate mail metal. You don't need to. You already have it. It's pretty darn close. Uh, anyway, some I always find it interesting to look, look at the color and, and kind of see what it actually is on the computer. 
versus just what I see my, with my eyes. Now here I am highlighting the chains and his armor, uh, and, and the chains, I'm just doing that kind of protruding area there. It's kind of like a, a checkerboard or, or like the lines on a, on a street kind of thing where it's just kind of in, a, in, in, in the sparks that are raised. I'm not bothering with the other parts. Now when I'm doing this chain link here, I'm just letting it pool. So I'm just pressing it on there and I have quite a bit on my uh, brush. I'm just, again, just letting it pool. Stormhost Silver, this is a little bit brighter. Again though, still fairly close. Um, to the point where I'm not sure the naked eye really sees them as too different, but it's whatever. Alright, so we almost have all the main parts painted here. Uh, this is actually going a lot quicker. Uh, it feels quicker <laughs> than I thought it would. It feels quicker than when I edited it, that's for sure. This monster brown is for all the wood. And so he has a stake here. He actually has a stake in the back of his head. I didn't notice until later and painted it all off camera. And then his wheel as well. I decided to make the same one. Now he does he does have these like leather straps. And uh, I, I'm going to go in and paint these this color. But I'm going to shift the color of the wood. So this won't look the same. Right now it looks the same and I think that's a bit silly. I don't think your leather straps should look the same as your your wooden uh, pieces. That That's again kind of goofy. But uh you, you'll see what I do to the wood, and I, I, I'll talk more about why I did it as well. But one of the benefits of it, the side effect of it, is it shifts the color a lot, so it looks very different, even though the base color is both monster brown. Which I think is a good point that, you know, if, if you have a color, and you have some washes, and you have other colors between highlights and washes, and just different applications, you can, you can make that one brown be multiple browns quite easily, just depending on what you do to it. Now we'll say, now that we're getting kind of, here we're reaching around different pieces and we've painted a lot, is just be careful, right? You just, you just don't, you know, don't sneeze. Uh, sneezing would be bad, you just like, you could, I've, I've never sneezed, but I have had a random, like, jerk of my arm and just swiped it with paint. Okay, so we got strong tone out here, comparable to Agrax Earth Shade. It's just a br dark brown wash, uh, and we're gonna do this on the wood and these kind of uh, straps here. Now, I'm, I'm assuming these are kind of like a leather, and so I'm just letting it kind of pool there to add kind of a neat texture. And then I'm just going to town on these vines. I'm um, just just throw it on there. Now, and th throwing a wash like this onto that will dim the highlights. It won't make it as drastic. And it actually kind of helped blend it all together, which again, super happy about. I, I dig that. Um, the only thing to note is I'm not too concerned about getting it on the horse. Uh, he's dark enough to where this won't really be noticeable. All right, now I have finally found the exact position you can have it in to where it'll work. If it's any other position than this, it will not work. But there you go. Now you have it, which will be kind of nice because I kept like getting the the paint off with my fingers and it was getting really annoying. So I've added some white to the Warlock Purple. I, I for whatever reason, never got back to this, but now I am. And again, just highlighting the kind of gross muscle texture in there, uh, making it a little bit more noticeable what it is you're looking at. And there are some parts that I put in that don't have the texture, they're just like these indents, and I highlighted the center of that too. You can kind of see it on the back leg right here, actually. All right, Parasite Brown. This is a very orange brown. It's very good for like a uh, Fallout minis or anything like uh, a wasteland, in my opinion. Uh, it just looks like there's some like rust in it. Um, but I'm only adding this to the wood. And I'm not actually using this as a, ha a highlight per se, as more of a texture and tint and whatnot. So maybe a little bit on there, but for the most part, the, uh, the leather becomes untouched. And then this goes all over the wheel in that stake, and it makes it look super nasty and exactly what I wanted. And it might look out of place a little bit here, 
but okay so I, I try to do something here and I don't know how well it went but I'm using blues and greens kind of on the bottom you know with like his his uh the, the skirt thing and and then uh his bandages will be that way too uh, which are cool colors and then the top part I, I did some oranges and some reds doing a warm color and I thought that kind of contrast between the top and bottom halves with kind of that wood um, the, the kind of the vines there uh, as a, a nice separator. Uh, I, I don't know. I thought it looked cool. So, so that's what I was kind of going for here. Uh, he has a hand and a face, basic skin tone. Uh, it's easily uh, colored and uh, brought up and, and also uh, darkened. And then some screaming skull for his teeth and the horns. He's got a lot of like bone spurs coming out everywhere. He's also got a rib cage down there. You can't really see it too well, but it's it's down there as well. So I'm getting all these bone colors out here. All right, now we got the flesh wash out and we're gonna do this on the flesh. Now you could paint his hand like a glove, by the way. You could totally do it like a, a, a brown, like a leather glove or even like black or something like that. Um, but I wanted a little bit more skin, not just his half top of the face. I'm also putting this flesh wash on the screaming skull, all the bone. I'm not gonna highlight it up. I want it to look dirty. Basic skin tone back out, just highlighting it back up. Again, not adding white or anything like that. Just going right back to the base. Uh, it's a fairly bright, so the wash highlights it pretty good. I do end up at the at the very end off camera. I'm not quite happy with this face, so it's a little bit too bright, and so I darken up his lips and add a tiny bit more on where the kind of the the crown ends right at the brow, and so it kind of like shadows his his uh, his eye sockets. All right, dragon red on the cape. So this was something I I I don't remember on the uh, on the art. But trying to decide on, because I, do, I believe the art doesn't have a cape, at least that I could tell. Um, but I was trying to think of what I could do to make this miniature just kind of interesting visually, uh, as in a, 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 a kind of a, a statement. And I think this was really good. You got this kind of overall cool miniature, in both in color and, and also just kind of in tone. It's not, it's not super vibrant or anything. And then bam, this like red cape. Um, I thought about almost keeping it like this, kind of like a blood red and making it a very bright red. I end up um, kind of trying to desaturate it a little bit uh, just to make it a little bit more muted. I didn't want anything brightly colored in this game per se. So I felt like uh, at least for this miniature, um, it was it was going to be toned down a little bit, but still have that kind of splash of red, which I like. Be careful here with the hair in the back, by the way. Obviously, you've painted everything else. White gray is amazing. Black gray and white gray are both used, and I highly suggest everybody have that. Rarely in life are things pure black or pure white. So having a white gray and a black gray, where they're almost white and almost black, is perfect and immeasurable, and it means you can highlight up to white, which is kind of hard to do. Garibald Crimson out. I'm actually going to do this a couple times, and I'll explain why when I, once I do it. Uh, on on this uh, this cape, liberal amount letting a pool. I want it to get kind of dark in there and the recesses, and then because again I want that contrast to go up. All right, now we have Drakenhof Nightshade for the beard. Again, I didn't know what to do. I was uh, thinking maybe doing the flesh wash. That would have made it look kind of dirty and more yellow. Um, but I ended up with the cool uh, version of the beard where white and blue. And blue works fantastic for a clean uh, shadow on white. Uh, it actually works pretty well. All right, light green blue out. And this is for these bandages. This is going to be shifted a lot. Uh, and you'll you'll see that once I do it, but it's amazing how these light colors react to a wash It just changes it completely uh, Which is really nice. It's really cool. It makes it a color you wouldn't even guess uh, and, and like like you would think it was almost painted that color as opposed to painting something like this Again, just be careful that being said his the horse's legs would be probably the easiest part of this miniature to touch up 
Uh, there was no wash on them or anything like that, so it should be pretty easy. Alright, while we're waiting for that to dry, we're gonna get the WAP, the, the WAP, the weapon bronze and as a base color for these bells. I will be highlighting it up, um, but I need something that looks believable but way darker than what I'm gonna be doing. If it was lighter, like if I was painting this gold straight up, I would actually add some silver and have the silver be the highlight. Uh, silver on gold works fantastic as a highlight, by the way. It looks like a light reflection point. Um, so it works really, really good like that. I highly suggest if you're painting something straight, straight gold, get some silver out and use that as a highlight. It's great. Okay, Drushi Violet. This is a, um, a purple wash. As you can tell, it instantly shifts the color of that it, it, to where it looks like a, a different color. Like you can tell where I've put it and where I haven't, uh, in a pretty drastic way, which I think is really cool. Again, just kind of having these, uh, just kind of brighter, more cooler colors down here uh, on the bottom half of it, uh, hoping to make the warm part of the cape and then the the, the eye kind of fire uh, stand out a little bit. Okay, so I'm highlighting back up to white gray. I am not using uh, pure white, and I do not go to pure white. Uh, I, I don't want his hair to be like like Santa here or something like that. He, he just, don't make him Santa. He already has the red behind him. He, don't don't press your luck. <laughs> All right, so here's that gold out. As I said, I'm going to use this as a highlight. It's it's a drastic enough change to where um, I, I I think it it looks natural, but also still highlighted there, which is kind of perfect. As you can see, you can you can play around with it and thin it out to where uh, it it it's e it's either blending or it's a drastic kind of light reflection. I think either one works. All right, and then we're gonna bring that gold back up to the crown here. Uh, I'm, I dig any guy with a crown. I, a person after my own heart, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but um, originally, I just planned to paint this uh, gold, but it looked kind of a bit like a blob, so I ended up adding a wash uh, later on. Again, it's one of the things where don't be afraid to. I mean, just stick to your plan, and then if you don't like it after a while, you know, you painted it some other stuff. Well, you know what? Go ahead and change it. Okay, Dark Vermilion out. This is a very bright, bright red. Um, it, it, dark Vermilion to me is getting close to pink. Um, whereas I would still call it red, but it's it's getting there. Um, and this is going to be the base color for the fire stuff out of the eyes. Um, this side, by the way, for whatever reason, is way better sculpted than the other side when it comes to the fire out of the eyes. Um, to the point where I almost decided that this doesn't have that, but I thought it would be silly out of just one, and in the art, this eye is the one you see with it out, so, you know, it's whatever. And then I'm going to do a very liberal highlight, covering pretty much most of it, except the recesses of the cape in this dark vermilion. Uh, and, and so... You kind of have this first level, this first step of contrast. And as you can see, it's it's pretty drastic. Um, yeah, this is this is going to look pretty crazy, uh, but I think at the end, I I'm really happy with it.
Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me by the way, we are almost done here. So now I've added some white to the dark vermilion, and this is going towards the pink. So there are really two ways you can highlight red. You can highlight it where it goes pretty much to orange, or it goes pretty much more pink. Um, it, it just kind of depends on, you know, how much yellow versus white is there. I think is, is the key difference here. Um, adding white to it made it pink, and so this is going to be uh, a, a, in that kind of spectrum of highlighting. I wanted it to look different than the fire. Um, I thought I was originally going to do just orange on all of it. I was going to get my lava orange on and do all of it, but I wanted this to look a little bit more desaturated. The white helps with that, um, and distinct from the other dark vermilion. Uh, which it does that as well because I kept it that orange. So I, I kind of killed two burns with one stone and what I was wanting out of it through this. Um, again, it just, it just doesn't seem as, you know, blood red here, which is kind of what I was, ended up going against because I didn't want some almost cartoonish level of, um, red cape. Uh, you know, one of those stylist things like, you know, the, the video game Banished or something like that where it's like monotone with splashes of red. Here's that lava orange. Um, I have this pretty watered down, and instead of doing a line, I actually just kind of set it on there and let it kind of pool on the dark vermilion. So wherever I put it, it's going to be brightest, but otherwise it's, it's fairly shifting the color more than some drastic highlight, mainly because I didn't want it to seem like the fabric that I just highlighted. I want it to seem more like it's this kind of wispy glow, uh, this kind of solid thing that happens to go from red to orange. Okay, so those are some crazy highlights. Let's throw some Karaberg Ker Crimson on it. Uh, just to, again, further kind of blend it a little bit, desaturate it a little bit. Um, and, and this is pretty much going to be the final look. Now, once that dries, it'll look a little bit different, but you know, what you see is pretty much what you get. So we're at, we're at the Wissywig moment, uh, I think, here <laughs> of, of the cape. And uh, yeah, I think it looks super kind of cool. It, it accentuates, I feel, the raggediness of it. You know how it's it's definitely been through some better times. All right, light green blew out again as the highlight it's watered down. You will still see the purple through it. It will not be the same color that it was before the Drushi Violet, even after the highlight. Uh, so it'll stay kind of in that slightly purplish range. Uh, that uh, again, I'm, I'm happy with how that turned out. And I think it's pretty close to the concept art too. The concept art, you can see it kind of flaying off of the miniature a lot more, and it looks to have that kind of blue tint. All right, uh, there are three or four candles we need to paint, so we're going to go and get the buff out, and that's going to be my candle color. Um, again, I'm not worried about sculpting a, a flame on there or anything like that or anything fancy. They're just going to be candles on the wheel. And because that's what the miniature has, so that's what I paint. Alright, next up, this is kind of fun. So I didn't see this in the concept art, but I noticed these bumps here on this kind of raised leg here and a few spots elsewhere. And I thought, you know what would be kind of cool? To throw a pure green. I went all the way to red. I have the blue green out here. Let's just go green, make it look kind of gross and add that slide. This is something, so like I showed my wife, she didn't even notice this. Um, but I think when some people do notice it, if they do, if they're looking at your miniature, they're gonna be like, oh, whoa, look at that. It's you know, nasty or gross or whatever, it just looks kind of cool. And if I see that in other miniatures throughout, I might just, uh, you know, uh, keep that going and, and kind of tie them all together that way. Now, for a top level highlight, I'm doing the moldy clothes. Uh, this is not actually that bright of a green, but against the black gray of the skin, it's pretty darn bright. And so that's as bright as well. I don't want to get like a moot green out or a, a jungle green or anything like that. I don't need to go, you know, crazy yellow green here. Uh, that would look way ridiculous, I feel. But just that little bit of green there, I think just, just adds a little something to it. Kind of cool. 
All right, we are almost done here. Almost the last step here. Ash gray dry brush. As you can see, it's so awesome. I love it. I love just watching it. Like, I don't know about you, but for whatever reason, I, whenever I see rocks, I am excited to dry brush them. It's dorky probably and it's stupid, but I, I like it. I, I, I like seeing the kind of texture almost appear before my eyes. Uh, it's just a really cool effect and, and it's super easy to do too, so why not? All right, last step out. As I said, finished the whole thing. I was like, you know what? That crown needs a little bit of contrast. Let's get some flesh wash. It's a very light brown. Um, normally flesh washes have a little bit of red in them too. And uh, red and orange and warm colors go great with gold. So that's what I chose. And here is the final miniature. Here is the knight errant. I hope you like it, guys. I really actually enjoyed my time with this. I spent a long time on it. I got like six hours of just recorded footage. That didn't include multiple coats that I had to do on some of them, and of course uh, dilly-dallying and trying to fix things and whatnot. But I tell you what, I think painted up, he looks so much better. I really, really like him, and in fact, he's got me kind of excited to paint the, the rest. So let me know in the comments below what I should paint next. Um, you know, again, anything core box or Monsters of Avalon I can do. Uh, so I already have another one planned uh, for a gift for my patrons, so I'm going to be sending them one of the Tainted Grail minis. Uh, it's actually one that's multi-piece and like this hips plastic. It looks really nice. Can't really buy it. It's just kind of a promo thing, but I got like 50 of them, so I'm going to send them out. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks so much for being here. I, again, I always appreciate it. I hope hope you enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed doing it uh, and uh, showing it to you guys. So. Anyway, again, check out that Oath Sworn as well, and as always, a huge shout out to my patrons. I don't take money from these companies, and therefore, it is my patrons that are the driving force of this channel. Thank you so much for supporting the honest game coverage that I try to bring here, and just my, my other pursuits like miniature painting as well. Alright guys, I will talk to you very soon. Have a wonderful day.